I feel like this woman is a much better woman than me because she saw the red flags and she was like, nope, I am not going to ignore red flags. I am going to run for my life because your concerns are a red flag. And that is one of the reasons why I'm saying worry because as Christians, a lot of times we take red flags and we sweep them under the carpet. When people now see red flags from the get-go and they be like, listen, I'm not going to take this. I'm leaving. Still, we're going to judge them. She dodged a bullet for sure. That's one thing for sure. Because you, Pastor Zulu, you, Zulu, you, going to off. Going into it off. Now. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Perseverance Maremeni, also known as Madam Speaker, also known as the CEO of Self Love. If you're joining in for the first time, welcome to the family. Please hit that subscribe button, like, comment, and share. And if you're returning, thank you so much for the continuous love and support that you are showing me. I know that it's been a minute since I posted long form videos, and that's because I've been so busy with second annual women's conference preparations and execution. And now that we're done with the Pretoria edition and we're looking forward to the Polowani edition, I just want to say thank you so, so much to every single person that attended the Pretoria edition of second annual women's conference. It was amazing. It was out of this world. We're still going to be posting long form videos about that. My media team is so busy with that, and I can't wait for you guys to see what actually went down. And and thank you for those who actually made it and to the team ah man god bless you anyway today we're going to be talking about pastor zulu oh jehovah i've been seeing this man trending on my timeline where he's been posting videos of his wife and some clips of him ministering about his marriage that actually lasted nine days uh, first of all i would like to say that i like it for the men you know i like it for the men who are actually vocal about these things these days because it used to be us women only who used to be vocal about, you know, divorce and marriages that come to an end and the pain that comes with it. But the fact that men are also starting to open up now, that is beautiful. And we commend you for putting your story out there, Pastor Zulu. However, <laughs> I, there's a lot to say. There's a lot to say. Because the first video that I saw that you put out there where you were saying, look at the way she's singing this woman and she walked out of a marriage after nine days at first i didn't think the person who is actually posting these things is the actual owner of the wedding i thought it was somebody else who picked it up from social media only to find out no the guy who is actually posting all this content is the ex-husband you know and when i looked at the whole thing i realized oh no man this thing happened actually a long time ago because the divorce took place the marriage and the divorce took place in 2019 but these videos are now being reposted by this husband i believe that because now it's getting a lot of attention he's decided okay let me resurrect the whole thing let me start posting from scratch so as i was busy looking i'm like okay i want to understand what, what is actually going on because one thing's for sure girls basalwani we love marriage so much because marriage is glorified in our churches so much because every single time when you go to church there'll be an altar call for those who want to get married or prophecies about those who want to get married or how beautiful people are who are matchy matchy you know so marriage is one thing that is really glorified at churches i don't want to lie about that one so it's a thing that almost every christian girl wants to have but now when a christian girl who is even singing like an angel walks out of a marriage after nine days nine days what could be the problem okay let's watch the first clip that i saw and we're gonna break it down we're gonna unpack it as we are going with the video okay stick with me Okay, so the thing that caught my eye, and I believe this is what caught a lot of people's eye, is the way the caption is written, that this person is singing so well at her wedding, only to walk out after nine days. You know, if this thing was being said by a third party or something like that, it would make sense. But this thing is actually being said by the ex-husband, and this thing is how old? 
2021, 2022. Yo. But anyway, that's not a problem because healing takes forever for other people and that's fine. But here's the thing that I don't get. Ne? The first red flag that I'm seeing from this whole thing is the speech that this person gave at his wedding day. So out of all these women in the world, out of everybody and everything, I'm picking you, I'm choosing you, I'm making you my queen. Go down on your knees as a sign of humbleness that I may give you this crown that I'm giving that you must not take off this crown. Ne? Let's just watch this video that I'm talking about, about him giving a speech during his wedding. Ne? And then we'll come back. Since you haven't said a lot in your vows, I prepared something. As I'll be uncovering a veil, I want to speak upon it. Thank you. Thank you for coming to experience when I remove the veil. Maybe later on we will unveil it in the bedroom. So I have a tendency, saints, of doing things differently. Because my name is Cedric Zul. As I'm going to uncover this veil, there are words that I would like to say to her. That as I'm removing this veil, I'm making you a queen. And I'm making you a queen in front of everybody. I'm, so I'm not only removing the veil, leaving you with nothing. I'm making you a queen, I'm like a Zulu. I'm making you a queen of the Zulu family. I went and I looked for a crown. With this crown, baby, I'm putting this crown on you, even in front of people that wanted me to show them that I'm picking you and I'm making you the queen of my heart. I want you to be lifted up even when we are going to take pictures, you must walk with pride so that people may know that you are the queen of the Zulu family. So should I decide that I want to remove this crown one day, I must call all these people to come and witness that. This is why I said even when I got engaged to you to say divorce is not an option. One day I may find you without a ring, but this crown will definitely be there. As the queen that got the crown, please do not remove this crown. Even when you see them coming dressed nicely, that doesn't matter because you are the one that won the crown. Do not remove this crown no matter what. So if you agree that I should make you the queen, being a queen comes with an entire kingdom. You have a kingdom to rule over. So if you agree that I should put this crown on top of your head, I will see you going down on your knees as a sign of humbleness so that I can put it on top of your head. I will see you going down on your knees to show that really you are humbling yourself in order for me to put this crown on top of your head. And I will surely take off this veil in front of all these people. But later tonight, it's definitely going down. And there goes our lady going down on her knees and having her beloved husband putting a crown on top of her head. Now, let's just put it aside for now and then we'll come back to this one because when everything is now going to be added all together, it will make sense. Because even with me, as I was watching part number one and I'm watching the vows of this guy and now I'm finding videos of him doing interviews about the wife leaving him. The big question is why? Why did this woman decide that only nine days is enough? To walk away and uh, for some reason i kind of feel like 
this man is putting these videos out there as a form of shame, you know, to shame this woman, to say, shame on you. You couldn't even last a month. You couldn't even last two months. And for me personally, I feel like, you know what? Bravo to people who actually see it early that marriages are not working out and they walk out before it's too late. They walk out before there are other things and other attachments. If you get in there and you find the shock of your life, walk out. Because there's another video that I saw where a lady was giving a story to say, you know, I'm about to get married in a month's time and I found out that this man has got a baby outside and this and that. He's sorry that I found out and he was not, you know, ready to share. And I want you guys to tell me what to do. People are busy mentioning me, come and help, come and help. I didn't even comment in that video. If you're watching this video and you're one of the people that mentioned me in that video, and easy, and easy. Because if you're saying you found your husband, with the baby you found out that your husband has a baby and this and that and you are asking us what to do because you don't know what to do because your family is saying the marriage is going on the wedding must go on your uncles are saying the wedding must go on so right now we must tell you what to do huh? no it's a trap for as long as when you don't know what to do then it's fine but if with all this information that has been presented to you, I mean, guys, I always say that, you know, God loves us so much that he reveals things to us at the right time. But we are the ignorant ones who decide that, no, we are going forward, we go in the name of Jesus, forward, we go, even though God is revealing things to us to say, hey, babe, listen, don't do this, don't do this. You are so blessed to find out before you get married that this person has a kid, but you're still asking us, what must you do because your family is saying the marriage must go on. Anyway, I'm not going to tell you what to do. You, you do what is best for you. If you're going to come back later on and we must talk to you about how to get a divorce lawyer because now the kids are seven, it's fine. It's, it's, your, it's your thing, okay? You, you decide on yourself. Uh, back to the issue of this pastor who got left after nine days of being married. There is no shame in this woman leaving, first of all, you know, because you don't have to wait for a year for you to leave a marriage. If you are walking in right now and you feel, oh, I said, wrong turn, you walk out now. In fact, you are the girl. If you are going to be walking out immediately after you walked in because you realize, oh, no, it's, it's a scam. It's not what I thought it was. Okay. But um, the main thing that I'm here to address is not the fact that I'm maybe I'm siding with the woman to say, don't shame her because she walked out after nine days. The thing that caught me is how this man is not explaining the reason why his wife left him. I, for one, shared openly about my divorce. And I shared even the reasons why I got divorced. The reasons which are on the divorce decree. But this man is not telling us the real reason why this woman left. He's busy saying, no, she, she had her own concerns. We had a family meeting, but after that she packed and she left. But here's a red flag that happened. Just watch this one with me. She put on winter pyjamas. When we got to that place where we had booked, I was sitting with my groomsmen and I left them where they were seated and I told them that I'm going to my wife now. We are going to make a baby tonight. When I get to my wife, I find her wearing something that closes up to the neck. She is literally covered up and I ask her that, Mama, when you left your home, didn't they tell you what's going to happen when you get married? Well, after I spoke to her about that, she pretended to be tired and wanted to sleep. So I just said maybe she's tired because it's the wedding night. So I let her sleep. So the following day we wake up, we have to fly to go to our honeymoon. And when we get there, I tell her that baby girl. Then now when we get there, I start confronting her to say, please tell me the truth because I'm also not a virgin anyway. So what's going on? So now I'm asking her, when did she lose her virginity? Because every time when I'm on the phone with her, I'd be the one that is always telling her the things that I have done, confessing to her. But she's not telling me anything about herself. And the only thing she would say to me is that, yeah, now she is saved, she sings at the church, she goes to church with her mother, and that is it. She doesn't even warn me that sometimes she goes crazy. I start seeing the crazy when we get to the honeymoon. I find out that I've been charged so much money, 60,000 rands, for somebody who is not even a virgin. And that is the one thing that made me so angry at the honeymoon. 
Then I say it's fine. Since, well, you're not a virgin and I was also not a virgin. Let's go past that one. I want a baby by the end of this year. It's February now. By December, I want twins. I was so shocked to find out that she was on prevention. She even took the prevention medication before we went for our honeymoon. So these are some of the things that hurt me. And as much as they say men are evil, but imagine paying 60,000 for somebody only to find out all these things at the honeymoon. That's when I lost it and I fought with her. My uniform so I get packed. home and I found my uniform ironed and packed because we're going to do some catering business. Then the next day, uh, wait, I'm going buy some right. But But next to my uniform, I see that she has packed all her stuff. Some even in plastic bags. So I, I, I call her and say, Mama, what's happening, Lapaya? Ati, I'm leaving. Remember Tuesday we had a family meeting. She didn't. And then it's Friday. As I'm leaving. It's okay, Mama. So now that because I can feel the pressure that she's really leaving me, I tell her that when you leave, may you please come back at least on Monday or Tuesday. Or better yet, I will come and fetch you when it's time for you to come back. Because I didn't want to believe that she's leaving me. It's very far from where I am in Pumala. And then, and then that's how she left. So I went out and I feel up I so I went out to fill up some petrol on one of my cars or trucks and when I came back she was gone. Yeah, obviously you were hoping to go to your police. Hey, hey, since well it's a Friday, that's why I would say come back. Yeah, come back on Monday or Tuesday. Hey, hey, to my amazement. So when I came back, my niece told me that actually the police are the ones who came to fetch my wife when she was leaving. And for the sake of my own safety and yours, I don't want to dwell too much on the issue of the police coming to fetch her because that's another story altogether. For, for, for safety, yet to song. But it became it became worse. There was court involved. Uh, I lost more money from the wedding. I lost. I even had to pay twenty thousand rent for four visits for a lawyer Lamu driver from Whitbank to Isiabusa. So it was that kind of drama. So she didn't just leave me nine days. No mama lapo. She left me and she made sure that I am defeated. So now the host is saying that the people who are viewing this live are asking what was the meeting about on Tuesday, which she was raising her concerns and what were those concerns? I think I, we have to know the reason why the family meet. What was exactly the reason? If family is why are these a young family? I think I'm not the one to do here. What was this? I heard, but I think you guys want him to go deep. I heard Ute, she, Ute, the reason was she wanted to break off. So, in a nutshell, the wife was tired in nine days. All she wanted was to just leave this marriage. Yeah. And also, I think, I think, still, still, uh, it doesn't give me the reason to not ask Ute what was the reason because, okay, so let me get this right. You, you get married to somebody assuming that this person is a virgin, right? And you pay Lawala of 60,000 because you are paying for a virgin, right? You are not a virgin, well, but you are paying for a virgin, it's fine. And then you get to the honeymoon and you are shocked that this virgin of yours is taking pills for prevention. And then when at that honeymoon, you say that it's February now, by December, I'm expecting you to have a baby. What happened before you guys walked down the aisle? Did you have these discussions before you walked down the aisle? 
or you thought that because now I have locked this person up during the matrimonial ceremony, now I'm going to show her my true colors at the honeymoon. Because you are talking about how crazy this woman is, how this woman is now behaving a certain way, but you are shocked that she's not a virgin. It's fine, you're not going to judge her because you are also not a virgin. But then you want a baby. A baby is not from God. These demands that you are giving her at the honeymoon, are these not the things that you should have discussed beforehand to say, listen, when we get married, I expect you to have a baby with me nine months after we get married. Maybe she would not have even walked down the aisle with you to begin with. Because honestly speaking, in my opinion, it's giving narcissism vibes. Because how do you... And I know you're trying to make yourself look good, but you're just giving it away anyway. Because if you're going to say that at the honeymoon, I said to her, nine months from now I want a baby, but this woman is busy taking pills to prevent. This woman is not a virgin. I married a virgin. I paid 60000 for a virgin, but it's fine. And then you say that when you got home, there was a family meeting. And during that family meeting, this woman raised concerns that she's not happy about. And you're not even disclosing what those concerns are. Because those concerns which she's raising, they are obviously very valid concerns. That's why she up and left. Like I said in the beginning, that women love marriage. Especially women from the church, they admire marriage so much that, listen, being married is a thing. When you're married and you're matching with your husband. In fact, even like being married to a pastor, wow, what an achievement. Top achiever, that girl. So for a top achiever to actually get up and walk out of a marriage, I'm right, my brother, there's something you're not telling us. There is definitely something that you're not telling us. And like, honestly speaking, in my case, I'm not even going to judge you for sharing your story. You are well within your rights to share your story about how your marriage only lasted for nine days, how you were laughed at, how you were depressed, and this and that. But I'm wondering now, what are her reasons of wanting to walk away from a marriage after nine days? Because your concerns that actually got her to be angry at you during the honeymoon, then when you guys came back, you had a meeting, and then nine days later, she walked out. Your concerns are a red flag. And that is one of the reasons why I'm saying worry. Because as Christians, a lot of times we take red flags and we sweep them under the carpet. Uh, when people now see red flags from the get-go and they be like, listen, I'm not going to take this. I'm leaving. Still, we're going to judge them. We're going to have husbands who are busy posting them, saying she walked out of a marriage. Look at the way she sings. Look at the way she is. She walked out of a marriage after nine days. Yes. Bravo to her for working out of that marriage. If it's toxic, if she realizes that she's dealing with a narcissistic person, bravo to her for walking away after nine days. She did so well. In fact, she should have left you by the altar, my brother. Because there's no way somebody is just going to up and leave. What did she say her concerns were? You know, more than once, I've had people asking me this question, especially during interviews. Did you not see the red flags from the beginning? And my answer is always yes, I did see the red flags from the beginning and I ignored them. And I feel like this woman is a much better woman than me because she saw the red flags and she was like, nope, I am not going to ignore red flags. I am going to run for my life because of these red flags. Sure. But anyway, as the people are saying in the comment sections, you know, because at first I felt like people were being too harsh on you when they say, Yo, Unilicity, sorry, since last year, since year before last, since all these years you've been posting these videos of your ex-wife. Literally right now I feel like you are trying to get your ex-wife's attention so much. That's why you are still posting the same thing. Guys, I for one am still suffering from people posting about my ex-husband. Like I never ever ever post about my marriage, my previous marriage. But in every comment section, in every video that I post, in the comment sections, you'll find people commenting about my marriage. Oh, that guy, shame. I wonder how he's like now. I wonder how he feels now after losing such a wife. They do that to me all the time. And that is so annoying, you know, because I am so over it. And it's only been two years. And I know that for you, maybe it's going to take 10 years for you to stop posting videos about this woman who left you after nine days. Or maybe you are waiting for her to respond. And uh, this woman, in her refusal to respond, she knows exactly what she's dealing with. I wish to meet Nom Tandazo one day. Nom Tandazo, if you find this video, please, I want to have a private conversation with you. Because Nom Tandazo must multiply. Nom Tandazo must multiply. 
because wow we need women like mom Tandazo. we need women who when they see that this marriage is a problem from the get-go they don't wait for a year and pray and be in denial about it they just up and go because they can see that problems are ahead because obviously you showed her flames at the honeymoon she left you after nine days you saying that you wanted a baby within nine months of you being married you said that when you were marrying a virgin you paid a lot of money you paid 60,000 and then now you are surprised why this woman left you if these are some of the things that you were sharing with her when you guys were together there at the honeymoon if these are some like an inch of the colors you were showing her at the honeymoon ah, don't tell us you have balls of steel for actually leaving a man like that because a lot of women would, would have been in denial a lot of women would have stuck around and waited for a miracle to happen for this man to change and I don't know how many women I've spoken to, I've had private conversations with who are married to pastors, who are exactly like this man, who are making babies out there, who are narcissistic, who are abusive. There's a video that I did not so long ago about a pastor who was shouting as, at his wife in the, in the middle of a service. Nomtandazu, bravo to you for not having to wait that long, for not having to wait until it gets to a point where this man drives you to a psychiatric ward. I respect the fact that you don't want your story to be heard or to be shared, but I say congratulations to you for choosing yourself and walking out while the cement is still wet. Because had you waited longer, you probably would never would have lived to tell the tale. I'd like to believe that if this is what is trending now, four years later, Aisha, I'm sure you are very proud of yourself for walking out of that marriage after nine days. That being said, thank you so much for tuning in. That is my thought about Pastor Zulu, who is making his wife trend for leaving him after nine days of them being married. Uh, and it seems like he's wearing a ring now, meaning that he has found a new wife. You are somebody else's problem now, man of God. Focus on being the problem to that new wife of yours. Leave Nung Tandazo alone because, wow, Nung Tandazo dodged a bullet. She dodged a bullet for sure. That's one thing for sure. Because you, Pastor Zulu, you, Zulu, you. Off. Off. Ah, well. But anyway, with that being said, thank you so much for tuning in and I wish you, Pastor Zulu, all the best with your new wife, but I wish your new wife strength and Nom Tandazo, wherever you are, I wish you all the best. I hope you are strong, my sister, with all this information that is being shared about you out there. I would like to believe that you are a woman who is very content, very strong, very much aware and I love it for you. Tell me what you think about this topic in the comment section down below and I'll see you on the next upload. I love you so much.